All right, just picked up this welding frame, end top. This is 12 feet long by 36. This fixture table, this is a fixture table. This is three foot by four foot. It's on a frame. It's only a quarter inch thick, but that's all right. It's on a frame, so that's good. And I didn't pay much for this. Facebook Marketplace, 650. And I had to drive about hour and 40 there, hour and 40 back. So it was a bit of a drive with the trailer, but for 650, you know, if you had to buy it, you wanted to buy this thing. It's on wheels and leveling pins. If you wanted to buy this, 1500, 2000 probably. So it's, this, this is, this is pretty expensive new and it looks brand new. I mean, it absolutely, there's nothing wrong with this guy. Always used it in a shop. He used it to build um, race cars. So this is 35 wide right here. So I guess the chassis fit on the sides or something like that. And he just built the entire thing right on this frame and rolled it around. And then he had this clamp to this side right here has the braces. So he had this turned this way. We're gonna see what we're gonna do about this. I'm not sure yet, but I tell you, this is what I've been thinking actually. After I got this and paid so little for it, guy was a really nice guy too. I, I said to myself, I need to acquire more fabrication equipment for this side of the shop. And I think I just want to do it on Facebook Marketplace. And maybe that's what this video is about. It's just me just acquiring things on Facebook Marketplace and setting up this shop. Obviously, it's going to be a really long video as far as time to film it because it could happen over, I don't know, a month, two months. Who really knows? I'm going to try and get good deals and good equipment. And we're just going to build this thing out. We're going to obviously clear this all out. I bought some board and batten. We got to get that out of there. The camper build's got to move. A bunch of stuff needs to happen. So this is going to be a, this is going to be a super long video. But I, I really believe that, that uh, this would be fun. I need more stuff. Bandsaw. Uh, I think before we go any further, we got to get this table over there because right now it's taking up a ton of room. Are you thinking about this the wrong way? Is it because you have Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. He's got this head, duh. He's got these welded on. Well, that's smart. So good. I mean, you could put another thousand pounds on this. This thing could have a full half inch plate back on the side of the and it would probably still work perfectly. We also should turn the fixture table this way. So let's just crack those. This will be good enough to figure out if I like this setup.
took a few attempts to really kind of, I have a shadow, that's my problem right now. Um, that's what really confused me at first because the light's over there and my arm is over here. What I need is light over here, more light, a lot, lot more light over here. And I'll have to figure that out. But yeah, it, it, it took, it took a little, took a little while, but you know, I, you know, I, I I put it down here and I'm still trying to figure out what was going on. I lightened my, my, my hood because I thought maybe that was the issue and it definitely helped, but it didn't help enough. And then I did this one, right? And I just kept dipping and then I kind of figured out what that problem was. And then I did that long top one and it's good penetration. These Pierre Poland chairs, they really got to go. I just got to put them on marketplace. And I, I would assume that uh, they'll go pretty quickly. They're 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 pretty rare and and expensive. If you can pick up a press like this, I would call it light duty. <laughs> Let's bring this back up and let's see if we can get, see if we can cross this piece of wood. Okay, well, definitely works. Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. He looks like he fixed this at some point in time. You see how it's, it's, it, it, broke here you can see a weld there so i guess this whole thing just snapped off and he welded it tried to at least um just a whole bunch of buggers in here so if it breaks we'll actually you know we'll fix it the correct way well this is this is the spot that i'm going to leave the press in and I would say 40 bucks. This is probably a really good buy because I don't have a press at all, right? So this definitely for 40 bucks. Hard to beat it. Let's put this thing on. And then you should just be able to drop it and let the weight, that's what the whole thing is about. There it is. All right. Well, I could tell you it's it cuts a couple things here. One is, is that it wasn't cutting straight. I open this thing up here to see the blade and it's off the track here. I gotta put that back. But I also think I need to loosen these bolts up and give it a turn. Uh, and I also didn't think there was multiple speeds, but there is, look at this. There's three speeds. This is, it's manual. And this is right now it's on the slowest speed. See that? Let's put it on the medium setting for now.
and and let's do another cut with it without adjusting this and let's see what we can do well you can already see it's definitely cutting in so yeah i mean you can see so it was going in this bolt and this bolt. I think I just need to loosen it and give it a hair of a twist. Oh yeah. Way better. <laughs> This is gonna be a nice addition. We are headed out to pick up a drill press. And what else? I'm also going to pick up a stool that's right around the same area. You know, finding things that are in the same area is good, but it's difficult to plan it. Stools, okay. Two of these I got. So I went there just to get one. The guy had three. And I offered him 40 bucks for two. He wanted 25 for one. So so 20 bucks a stool. And honestly, they're pretty heavy. The thing that, that sealed it for me was is that um, it's, it's a piston seat. So if you're sitting on it, it goes down. <coughs> Typical to get it to go down when you're not sitting on it. It's, it's pretty strong. Uh, but that really did it. And obviously it spins and it's got this. So two of these, 40 bucks. That's gonna be good. Here's the other one. Uh, honestly, the guy had three. I probably should have just offered him 50 bucks for three, but I don't, I don't need three. I don't even, barely even need two. And here's a cool little surprise. When I was picking up the drill press, I passed a sign that said tool sale. <laughs> so I pulled in. Guy mostly had junk. Um, but. He, he had this dolly, and uh, he, told, he said, make an offer on anything. And I said, five bucks, and he said, it's yours. All right, we got the grease kit. Uh, these are always nice to have. It has all the different million different attachments and they're cheap. I'll link to this one in the description. It's like 20 bucks or something. It's always good to have one of these. This is the one I think I'm going to use. This one or this one, I'm not sure yet. Grease gun. You should always have a grease gun. Um, if you don't, I'll link to this one too in the description. But, um, but yeah, we're just going to grease these bearings in here. See them in there? Highly suggest picking up one of these like convertible type car hand truck. What oh, man, it's so good. Very, very handy. I've used it a million times. Wow, this thing is so heavy. Make sure it's pretty tight. Should be good enough. There we go. That's it. This is great right next to the truck. It's beautiful. Okay. Okay, here's what I got. I got a Craftsman half horsepower. It's in pretty good shape. Uh, you can see all these, you know, these plates here. Nice and neat. And there's the label for the motor 
The stand is good. I mean, it's dirty, but that's all right. That's no big deal. It's got a light. And it's an eight speed. 380 is the low. 85.5 is, uh, is the top. Now, 380 is pretty good for a low. If you're drilling super, super, super heavy duty metal, I would say that uh, you might want to have like a double reduction drill press that goes down below 200. But this is, this is good enough. This is, this is versatile is what it is. A double reduction has a versatile. It's very, very specific. It's, a spe it's for a specific task for sure. And I would have loved a, a, like a three quarter horsepower, something with a little more pep, but this thing was a hundred bucks. So you can't really beat it. Stand up drill press in good shape for a hundred bucks. It, uh, it's, it's not bad. Now, one thing, they, oh, it's funny because I was just about to talk about this and it's, it's popped off. This right here is how you, let me show you. This is how you do the belt tensioning right here. This, this can now move, see that? And this can get very loose. You're supposed to turn this thing, but if it's not, if it's not really tight, this thing pops off. So it's something you gotta keep an eye on. I may have to make it a hair tighter. I mean, this is pretty good. Eh, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe I'll make just just just, just a little bit hair a hair tighter. This top, I don't like this because it requires me to have it away from the window a lot so that it can open up. See that? And I might just remove these pieces so that I could lift it up. It's probably the smarter move. But other than that, I mean it's great. I mean it's 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 real smooth. It's got a depth scale, which is in great shape. And if you don't know how these these change speed, the change speed, it's it's pretty simple. All you're doing is, or so you're going to loosen it up. You're going to bring the motor in, and you're going to move the belt. So when it's on this one right now, it's at the lowest setting. I'll probably move it up just a hair, maybe one. But if you keep if you keep moving, you got to move both sides, obviously. Simple stuff. Change gear. I uh, change speeds. It's very very simple. So. So that's it. Now, one thing that was a little bit annoying, you got didn't have a chuck key. Uh, so I have one here. And sometimes you get these cheap ones on Amazon. I'll link to this one in the description. It's real cheap, but I did have to hit this with a grinder. Just a hair, because they coat this entire thing. And when they coat it, it actually adds a little bit. And then you, you can't get it in here. But now it's now it's real now it's real nice. Another thing you got to be careful of too is is that when you have this thing directly over this hole, if you need to hold that bit, I've done this twice now. If you don't hold that bit while you're undoing it, the bit just drops straight down <laughs> and lands right there. <laughs> so you don't want that, and it, it almost makes sense to put something underneath here so that it, you can catch it if it falls through. But but yeah, we're in uh, we're in top shape over here. All right. So the best way to check to see if it's going straight is put it back in and it's tight. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I have one little project that I want to do with this uh, drill press. See these shelves. This is three separate shelving systems, and it's only that wide, 24 inches wide. Those are the shelves. There's only four shelves. It's like a bottom shelf. It's on the ground, and like two in the middle and one on the top, right? Um, they're from Ikea, and I remember I had like a $100 gift certificate, and I had no clue, no clue what to do because you can't – It's Ikea is very far away from here, so I had to get something shipped. And this was like the only thing that was cheap and cheap to ship. So for a hundred bucks, I think I got like six of these or five, no, five of them, five of them, five of them. And I've used two already, but now I'm going to put these three together. But here's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to use just one shelving system and put all the shelves on one system and then put those little 
blue and red and green parts drawers in the shelves. To do that, I gotta drill a whole bunch of more holes. See, they only give you a hole for where the shelf should be. All right, I have all the sides, there's four sides, and I actually just rebar tied them through the holes, this side as well. Keep them in line. Probably hit them with a hit it with a punch, but I think we'll just wing it. I don't know if these are like, I don't know what these are considered. They're Fat Max Stanley Clippers. I left them out for geez, a long time and they rusted up. But I mean, they're still amazing. I think I paid a bunch of money for them, maybe like 40 bucks, 35 bucks new. But man, these, these things just cut anything. The, uh, obviously this is, um, this isn't very hard to cut this stuff. But I cut 10 gauge fencing with this stuff when I was putting up the fence. Oh man, that's about the max you can cut is the 10 gauge, 10 gauge wire fencing. This thing is crazy strong right now, but this is gonna be good. I'll put the bins on. The bins are four inches high. So that's five and a half, five, four and three eighths, five and a half, four and three quarter, four and three quarter. Five and so we're good. They're all gonna fit. Well, somehow I went to go pick up five clamps from somebody, and now I got like 20 clamps and a table saw. So. But it's a, it's a good table saw, it's a Makita. Let's get this thing out of here. It's got this little extension, so even though it's a job site one, it looks like this, this, piece looks like it's some sort of accessory I think and which allows you to cut a 4 by 8 sheet but before we turn this thing on I'm just going to open it up and double check that it's that the blade is tight it's not not really a smart idea to turn on a table saw or any kind of saw really chop saw unless you double check that the blade is is in there good and that right here. Now I'm not sure how to lock this blade so that you could undo this, but it doesn't seem loose or anything. It just seems like the shaft um, is just a hair, has a, has a hair play in it. Uh, riving knife is here, which is nice. Yeah, it does, does look like there's a little bit of a tweak here. Okay, that's better. Yeah, so it looks like just a hair off slammed is uh, is uh, is ninety. There's a little button right here. I really don't know what it does, but let's. I mean, I, I assume it's a safety. I don't know if you have to push it in or not. Let's click on. Nothing. Okay. So if I push this in, oh, I see. Maybe I have to hold it. Okay, that's good. So we know that it works. We just need a new eight and a quarter blade, brand new. All right, well, I, I went a little crazy with the clamps, but I have to say, I recently bought those ratcheting clamps and I just, 
I just really saw the benefit of clamps and I said, you know what, I need to start buying clamps that I don't have. And a lot of the clamps I don't have are large ones. I have no place to put them. <laughs> I, got no, I got no place to put them though. I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do here, but I mean, I, I should hang these things up. I mean, I probably just use nails. That's, you know, that's usually my go-to <laughs> is use nails, but still, I mean, there's a lot of clamps here. So we'll have to figure that out, but yeah. I killed it. A hundred bucks for these clamps, which is insane, and 80 bucks for the saw, which is also insane. All right, let's keep on going. I didn't know that we had these in the house. Somehow, these dark chocolate ice cream minis somehow entered the house and not my stomach. Very interesting. Okay, picked up a couple of half inch plates to go on here. Um, I'm excited about this, but I'm also nervous because half inch plate, very heavy. This piece is gonna go, uh, I think this is this is the right place for, for the welder. And I'm actually thinking about putting the water cooler up there too, and maybe even taking the bottle and making something that attaches to the frame just so I could free up this cart for a MIG welder. But yeah, these two plates are 38 by 48. And that is heavy. That's probably about 375 pounds per plate. They're in the back of the truck and I actually am gonna have my friend Julian come over. We are going to use the engine hoist and this plate clamp I picked up. Single plate clamp. Normally you use a spreader bar and two plate clamps, but you know, this isn't a thousand pounds worth of plate. Now, 
one thing is that we just want it to drop off. We don't want to really yank it because that could cause the tent to hurt. Hey, it's all great job, job, right? Great job. <laughs> that was, that was, um, I mean, seeing how easy it was to do it just that one where we made the mistake. Yeah. It, uh, oh, it, right. um, I mean, we should just do that on the first one. But yeah. um, I think we did it a lot safer on the first one. We were very cautious. We were very cautious. I think we got a little sloppy here. It's like, oh, we did this once before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're geniuses. Cannot be done without this point. Uh, could never yank it out. How did you get it in the truck? Okay, I already did a pretty good job cleaning this top with just muriatic acid. This is just, it's horrible. I should give you a close up of what this looks like. This is, this is the worst steel. Like, I mean, this is steel that they put when they're doing construction on the roads and there's, you know, big, huge gouges take it out of the road, they put this over it. So you could just drive over this, like in the city. You know, the, the city pays for it and then they just scrap it. That's what happened with this, this was scrapped. And I got this to turn into this with just muriatic acid. And it takes a bunch of tries, but you can do it. You can just see, you, you can see all the pitting. I mean, it's just, it's pitted to hell. Which is fine. I mean, I'm not worried about that, to be honest with you. It's a great, it's an incredible worktop. It'll last me the rest of my life for sure. It'll last my son's life. If he, if he decides to use it, it'll last his entire life. Um, it definitely can be used as a welding table. If you're trying to do precision work, no. You, don't, you, you definitely don't want this pitting because then things could fall into the pits and become you know, unlevel and get all wacky and stuff. So yeah, it's not precision work, but without a doubt, you can use it as a welding table. We're gonna try and get this one to look just like this one. I think we can do it with just this stuff. This stuff is, this is deadly. I mean, it is, look at the, the, the freaking skull and crossbones is the same size as the name. That's, <laughs> it's not just a little danger on the back. It's right underneath the name. This stuff is bad news. And I can tell you right now, if you never use this stuff and you want to try, be very careful. Here's, I'm going to give you some safety tips. This is what I'm using. I got three buckets. They all look different. That's number one rule. <laughs> you don't want to get confused, okay? Uh, I got this bucket. This is a little bit of water and baking soda. You need the baking soda. Why? Well, because you got to be able to neutralize acid. This is acid. You get the stuff on your skin. You want to neutralize it immediately. You put your hands in this water and baking soda. You also need that to neutralize the top because the acid just stays on there forever and it'll just eat it away. It actually will flash rust it. It's crazy. It removes rust, but then once it's removed the rust, it will start rusting it. So you have to neutralize it. So you keep that. Then I keep a bucket of water full. This is full, fresh water. Then I have this bucket, which I'm going to pour the acid into, and it's got a handle on it. All three buckets are looking different. That's what you want. And I got the power washer there. We're going to pour this stuff on here. Next thing, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I almost forgot to set up my fan. Got to have a fan. When you're working with deadly fumes like this, and I, when I say deadly, I really, I mean, honestly, it, they, it, this really is deadly. You breathe this stuff in, you're in sad shape. Um, you do not want to breathe this in. So you get your fan going, and when you're working with this sort of stuff, the safest place to stand is behind the fan. So when you want to use the power washer, you stand behind the fan. Why? Because the power washer is going to make water spray everywhere and you could get a drop, one drop lands in your eye and you now have one eye. That's pretty much what it comes down to is that uh, you, do not want, you do not want this in your eye. So you stand behind the fan, the fan is gonna protect you. you get, I got one of these, it's gonna go pretty fast, that's good. But yeah, you leave it on there and I tell you, when you pour this stuff on, you're gonna be like, it's smoking. Yeah, it's smoking. It's gonna eat this thing. It's just gonna eat away at it. And you will see how quick, I'm talking 10 minutes, and you'll be ready for, say, maybe a second coat of it. 
Sorry, obviously, one other thing here. Rubber gloves. I use these really heavy duty rubber gloves and obviously you need a breathing apparatus and you need some really big eye protection. If you had a full face, which I wish I really should just order one of those, that's what I would suggest using. I mean, you could still get it underneath here, but it's, it's harder than obviously this. This is pretty good, it's got side protection, but even the fumes can get in here and it will burn your eye. So you gotta be careful, but yeah, heavy duty rubber gloves, incredibly. I only have two lefts. <laughs> Tell you, man. All right, sorry about the fan noise, but you can see 10 minutes, this is bare metal right there. Still got rust here and a bunch of rust, obviously. So we're gonna do another coat, but you, I mean, look what this stuff did for 10 minutes, that's it. It's pretty amazing. All right, let's keep on going. Now, immediately, you got to neutralize this. Immediately. And I'll show you why in one second, because I want to do it real quick. A couple little spots left that I would never try and use acid on. I would just hit them with flapper wheel. This was a completely clean top. Just from working over here and, and pouring stuff on here and splatter coming over here, it flash rusted. Or anything that, that had acid touch it, flash rusted it. Now it's not, this is not bad at all. I mean, I could get this up in two seconds. Uh, but you can just see this was completely clean, even the bucket. This one over here, look at this one. This one was horrible and now it is completely and totally clean. And it even has a lot of, this, this was a good one. This was a really good one because this is from the factory when they rolled it. it this is totally smooth right here from the factory. N none of that exists on this one. But yeah, this one's a really good one. And I'm gonna use this one as like the main worktop. And this one, I'll probably put the welder on and the water cooler and stuff because this one is, is a lot smoother. This has been a project. Oh, look at this. This also needs to be cleaned. Look at that. Because that top was over here. Look at all of this. This is just surface rust. See that? It can come off. I can lift this up. Um, it's, it's heavy, but I can lift it up. It's real heavy. It's probably about 100. I don't know. 100 and something. 
250 pounds? Hey, can I lift it up? Next thing we gotta do is we gotta put a bench or two benches here. And I took down that from in there, but we should reuse it. But I'm not gonna make the mistake of not putting this on wheels. Anything that I have in the shop now has to be on wheels. Nothing can be permanent. Now for the legs, we're just gonna simplify things and just put it in the inside here. Absolutely not the strongest way to do it, I think we all know that, but, you know, I'm just banging out a little tape. It's just a 60 tooth. It's kind of a high uh, tooth count, really, for just cutting whatever. But I don't cut that much, so it makes sense to just keep the 60 in. If I was cutting every day, I would have more of a rough cut blade around. Okay. So cutting-wise, there's nothing wrong with this depth. If it was up against the wall, we'd have a travel issue, right? But that's what we got. That's why we're putting the wheels on it. So this will be good. And storage-wise, that's it. Now it fits in the two feet. So two feet is kind of like the perfect bench. That's it. Just need the wheels. It's good. Let's, see. Let's push it this way. It's good. That's real good. I like it. I just picked up something really cool for free. Uh, I probably, I mean, I would have paid 50 bucks for it, I think. It's a, I guess it's considered a file drawer system, but it's a monster one. 
this is like corporate, <laughs> this is like corporate level type. Uh, and somebody was using it in their garage. And as you can see, has casters on it. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think I'm going to be able to slide this out. So I might have to use a pipe. Jesus. That should probably do it. Amazing what like a pipe will do. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's on. Oh, it's oh, it fell into the crack, didn't it? Yep. That can happen. We do have an issue here in the fact that it could roll roll right out from underneath me. Oh, let's pick this thing. Sometimes the place being a mess can come in handy. Okay. I just got a screwdriver through the spokes of the wheels, the casters. So now they can't roll. It could slide though. Wait, 200 pounds. Okay, I got it. So they're all drawers except this one, which does that, but it also is a draw. Would you believe this? There's about 500 cotter pins in here, and I have no cotter pins. That's perfect. Okay, this is going to be real good for me. Obviously, I have to clean all these spray painted stencils off. I tried using some acetone here, and it comes off but not fast enough, so I'll probably just sand it. But I'm going to get it into place first. Now, I tell you, I've done... Let me get you a better view here. I've done these types of, uh, of like, reorganizations and relay out or whatever you want to call it. I've done it a few times now, and it always gets twice as bad before it gets five times better. That's really where I'm at right now. I'm in the twice as bad stage, but I can see the end here. I know exactly what needs to be done. And while this looks like a total disaster, it's, it's, I can visually see what I need to do. For instance, right there, those shelves, I emptied those out and I'm going to take this out of here. And then I'm going to cut off this part and I'm gonna cut it here, and I'm gonna turn this into another rolling top. It's not working. 
battery is good. All right, you always got to be careful when you open stuff like this and no springs pop out. That's always the case, this is that there's a spring that pops out and shoots somewhere. All right, well, yeah, it is pretty dirty. Maybe I get lucky. I just hit this with a bunch of bleach and the sheetrock is still pretty solid. I've just had a had mold on it. There's actually mold back in this corner too. And when I get those that roof those roofing shingles out of there, I'll clean that. But this this just needs to dry and it'll be good. I mean the bleach killed the mold like kills it pretty much instantly. Uh I'll tell you look at this. This morning I came out here and this top flash rusted. So I never neutralized this. Uh, I cleaned it, but I never neutralized it and didn't think it was a big deal, but the fumes got to it. And so I just gonna have to sand this and then neutralize it. Uh, really annoying. But I mean, it's gonna it'll, it'll take 10 minutes, but yeah, annoying. That's good enough, for sure. Hit it with some swirl remover, just to clean it up. Just some bug and tar remover. water and baking soda and a scotch light pad. <laughs> we are just going to leave that for a little bit here. Should be good. Okay, let's fill this thing. I got casters for this. So the sets, I think they're rated to 500 pounds each, clearly way more than I'll need. Oh, okay, cool. These come with hardware. So you can do a, a bolt attachment or a screw attachment. So we'll be doing screw attachment. I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Already got one split here. So we gotta change the way this works.
And you definitely don't want to crank down on these things too much. Ooh, this just this one just this one just stripped. So what we can do here is just twist it. Woof! It's beautiful. It's the perfect height. For me at least. This is the perfect height. This is 36. in some really good casters. That's what it costs nowadays. 30 bucks, these casters. Changes a workbench into like a really powerful tool. And you can move this thing out anywhere. Now it's not as strong as my other one um, that I built. I'll link to that video in the description. It's just another one of my shop organization videos. It's not like this, it's not as long. But uh, I built that one. That one's a lot stronger because there's, there's a support on this side over there. And there's a shelf too that ties everything together. There's a, there's a, there's a, that one's a lot stronger. Tell you these two stools that I bought, BioFit. Uh, this kid definitely stole these things. He, he, he has to he has to have stolen these because um, if you look these things up, I, I don't even know new these things are like three hundred bucks. <laughs> A st stool new is like three hundred bucks, so it's probably worth I don't know a hundred maybe. And I got two for 40. I wish I would have realized what they were. If I would have bought all three. And you know, it's one of the best purchases I've ever made. 150 bucks. Saved my butt like, jeez, three times now. Getting the plate off. Yeah, maybe, I'll, maybe I should show you this thing. So these plate clamps, these things, man, so handy. I, um, this one's by a company called, it's a funny name actually, Amorite. <laughs> I, I would assume it's Amorite, A-M-A-R-I-T-E. This one is rated to 0.8 tons, so I don't know what that is, 1,800 pounds, I guess. And well, it's a very, very simple tool. All you're doing is opening this latch up. You can see this thing move. See this, watch. And then that opens these jaws up. And then here's a piece of plate. Goes in, you close these jaws, right? And now the weight of this, I mean, you can't get this out. <clears throat> There's no way to get this out anymore. And it's because of the way the teeth work and how it's round. And as you're pulling, it gets tighter. So the teeth are caught. And as you pull, this piece goes in. So the heavier this is, the tighter it gets, as crazy as that sounds. Obviously, if you get too heavy, it just breaks the thing apart. That's where the weight rating comes in. It doesn't get tight. It doesn't get tight indefinitely. But incredible tool i'll link to this in the description it's like it was like 50 bucks couldn't have done it without it to be honest with you there was no way to get into that truck 
and lift that thing out of there. When it's on the table, we were able to kind of just pick it up a little bit and move it to the side, but no way to drag it out of the truck without this thing. table that the previous owner left at the house and I turned it into a shop table. The guy around the corner had a little yard sale. So I was a real real smart guy. Has tons of cars, works on cars, he drives works on cars every day. Um his cars. And he was having a little yard sale and he had a box with four casters in it, really heavy duty casters, you know those 500 pound casters. And he was like, yeah, just give me five bucks for him. And I was like, okay. Well, give me five bucks. I put him on this top. And this top immediately became like the greatest thing that, that I own. And now I refuse to have any work tops without wheels on it. Well, I've been walking by this pile probably for the last, what, 30 minutes of the video, maybe. But, uh, I, you know, I guess I could just talk about this. I got all this stuff uh, for 275 Now, uh, that's a lot of money. But there's a lot of cool stuff in uh, in here that I, that I really needed. First is is that this is a metal toolbox, and that's a metal toolbox. This is this is all full of stuff. So it's all full of bolts and, and nuts and washers and just a lot of cool stuff that you know, some old guy just collected forever. I mean, look at this drawer right here. That's all springs. Now, let me tell you something. That that can come in really, really, really handy. This drawer here is just all washers, right? This is stainless steel bolts. And this is small bolts. That's a lot of small bolts there. It also has this. This is screws these are all old screw screws that you know you would say you're trying to fix a piece of old furniture you want to use something i guess period right this is flathead and so there's some cool stuff in here and this one right here i think you know this you've probably seen these before this is a machinist toolbox this i believe is the sticker is gone but i think i'm pretty sure it's a kennedy so it's, it's a very well-known 
machinist toolbox. It's in rough shape. All this paint is, is flaking off, but it still works. And I had a lot of cool stuff in here. And then all these bolts, nuts, and then all these tools here. Whole bunch of open end wrenches and chisels. So, so 275, that's a lot of money, but there's a lot of good stuff here. The next thing I picked up that I, I guess I didn't talk about is, is that that toolbox right there with these pipe wrenches, some real big pipe wrenches. What's this one? Is this an 18 or a 24? I think this is a, I think that's an 18. And then that one, this toolbox is full of stuff. We'll open that up at some point. Then that come along right there. That's a two ton come along. Then I got, I also got that cabinet, which got shelves in it. So that was 150 bucks. That was a real good deal because if you look up the price of a two ton come along, they're like, I don't know, 50, 60, $70. And that one's brand new. So. And then obviously the dump trailer is cool. Uh, that's worth a little bit of money, but yeah, 150 bucks for that. And I also, <laughs> we're just, we're, we're trying to wrap this video up. I want to talk to you quickly about all this stuff that I got here. This is obviously metal cabinet. It's got shelves in it. And I can open it up here. I just picked it up the other day. I got to set up the shelves. Looks like it's got three shelves and it's got the, you know, the hooks to hang them up. This was 40 bucks. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up. Uh, this is definitely just a part one. I would I wanted to do this all in one video, but I didn't realize how long it was gonna take. And it wasn't really just about me buying stuff. It was like re rearranging things, moving things around, building stuff. So we're gonna have to do a part two. I didn't wanna make a three hour video. <laughs> so the next one's probably gonna be over an hour as well. I guess the last thing we should talk, well, a couple things. One is, is that I'm going, I've already sold those, those Pierre Paulin chairs that I mentioned earlier in the video. And I'll talk to you about those in the next one. This is also, this has taken me a month to get to this point. It is a long video, but it's taken a month to do all the work and record it. It's been a ton of work. Uh, the other thing I'm, I'm gonna be getting rid of, somebody might be coming today. Drafting table's gonna go. And then I also have a storm door that is over there. And if I don't get that out of here, I'm gonna break it. There's no doubt about it. But it's taken up some critical, critical, uh, you know, critical square footage over there. The wall space is so important. That's the one thing I've learned. Two things I've learned is put everything on, on, on wheels. And wall space is the most important thing in the shop. It is because without utilizing all the wall space you can, you can't get the interior clean and then you can't do anything. So, all right, last thing let's, let's talk about is this. We're gonna end with the thing we started with <laughs> and that is this, uh, this welding table. Now, uh, if you've commented already that obviously this, this should be flush, right? The fixture table and the metal top should be flat. You can delete that because I know <laughs> we, I am, I've just been trying to figure out how to do it. And I have figured it out. I've, I've totally figured it out because I wanted to do two things. I wanted it to be flush, but I also wanted the entire table to be higher. And I didn't want to have to spend 500 bucks doing all that kind of stuff, like buying all kinds of steel and welding everything. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do it simply and cheaply. And I think I figured it out. We'll do it in the next video. But yeah, and I also didn't mention, I don't think, how much that steel cost, the half inch steel. I paid $175 a piece for those. So 350 bucks, which is a lot of money, but it's not even close to what this stuff would cost new. Now, obviously, if it was new, it would be beautiful. It would be totally cold roll. Everything would be super smooth. It would be amazing, but you'd also probably spend 750 a piece. So. Uh, yeah, so I like 350 total <laughs> versus 1500 total. It's gonna be great. If I didn't have the fixture top, then, you know, some things, I, it, I don't think it would be good enough with just that crappy steel right there. But with the fixture top, it's nice. Uh, so yeah, we just need it to be nice and flush and we need it to be about six inches higher. So we'll get to that. We're also gonna move all the welding stuff over there and we'll test out this. I didn't really talk about this because 
you know, I didn't buy it used or anything, but I went to, where is it? Yeah, right here. I went to Harbor Freight and just grabbed one of these easy, um, these, I don't know, what do they call them? Easy Flux or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know what they, Flux 125, so 125 amp, just Flux Core MIG welder, just because they're super light and I can have it around the shop and, and my, my, um, my TIG welder does stick. Usually you get a TIG welder, it actually does stick to, but uh, stick is just not my thing. So we're going to, we'll get the, we'll get a MIG welder going because you can't TIG weld everything. <laughs> it takes a long time. Sometimes you just need something easy and we'll be using that in some future videos, the, the flux one. And that's it. That's it. That's it for now. So much more stuff to do though. So many more things to buy. I, I gotta I gotta get I gotta get a bandsaw that's set up for wood. Uh, this bandsaw is good, but it takes up a lot of room. It, it's got to be like that because you know you have something hanging off of it. So this one actually turns into a vertical bandsaw, but I think I want a bench top one, and just for wood. You know, a 10 inch or a 12 inch, 12 inch would be great. But if I can only find a 10 inch, I'll do that. I also think I want a bench top drill press. Sounds dumb, but I'd rather set it up so that like I have wood, a wood one over here with all the wood bits, and then my half horsepower on the other side, the stand up one, I'll have that all set up with metal. And then I, you know, it'll just be easier. And that's it. That's it. We got to get the table saw going too. Okay, tons of stuff. Let's end this now. And I will catch you on the next one. I appreciate it again if you've ha if you've hung on. It's uh, it's it's been a long one, but hopefully it was entertaining. All right, everyone, see ya.